Good afternoon, St. Tropic Growers. This is video number 46, and today's subject is the use of cover crops to attain fertility and also build some biomass and mulch on your inter rows, your vegetable rows. So, in the previous video, we discussed the use of sugarcane. Now, I intend to uh, wood chip that onto the tree rows, however, it could also be used to wood chip onto vegetable rows if you're intercrop planting. Now in this case, we have planted a mixed winter um, cover crop and we have the woolly vetch. This is called woolly pod vetch and this is a nitrogen fixer. And now it's come to its flower stage. Uh, and now it's really ready to come down if you want to terminate this crop. Now interplanted with these ones, we planted oats. Now as you can see I've waited till the oats have died. And the idea being that when I knock these down this cover crop will reseed itself. Now you can choose to do that with all of your cover crops in the future and save on seed. In this case I reseeded this row with a summer mix. We're now in early mid-August. It will soon be quite warm, and we have a summer crop, summer cover crop mix of radish, uh, cowpea. We've got millet in there, and a few other uh, beautiful, diverse types of cover crops. There's about seven varieties mixed in with that that particular mix. So. If you've seen one of these before, you just walk through before you knock your cover crop down and wind the seed through your inter row. Then you knock, knock your cover crop over the top of it to protect that seed from the hot sun. So if you leave this seed exposed to the hot sun, uh, you'll lose 90%. So best to use the current biomass or the current hay that you've got growing. Now to save money on that seed, and it's not very it's quite expensive, allow all of your cover crop, perhaps even the vetch, to go to seed and then knock it down when it's in the, the dry hay stage. That will lie dormant perhaps until the next cool snap and some of these plants respond to temperature. Others will sprout and then perhaps not do well in the hot weather that's coming. But however, you've replanted your cover crop in a sense for the price of one sowing of seed. So that's the idea behind this. Essentially, these oats here will reseed themselves. Now, if you're lucky, if you've noticed, sorry, that I've already uh, flail mowed, mowed uh, this row. The seed has already been sown and the hay has been fallen on top. If you're lucky to have one of these devices, uh, this is very useful. This is called a flail mower, F-L-A-I-L. And if you come and have a look, it's a series of rotating hammers. And this is a mulching mower. So this will leave a nice, even, one or two inch layer of mulch from your existing cover crop or anything any other crop that you might want to mulch up. So I go over this very carefully, just an inch or two above the surface of the row and just reduce the existing cover crop or the, or the crop residue from the previous crop into valuable mulch. So why are we doing this? The end game here is to avoid inputs and increase fertility of our soil. So we're feeding the soil by reducing the old cover crop or the old crop residue to mulch. Now in this case it wasn't heavy enough to provide a good thick cover so our seed is down but in this case we've got a hair of mulch it's not too bad but in my case, in this case, I'll 
add probably just one inch of hay that I've previously cut just to stop the sun drying out the seed that I've sown. And how do we water our cover crops? Well, I highly recommend a sumi soaker. And this is essentially a 50 meter long hose with many little holes perforated in there. And this will mist up to four meters either side of this tube. You can call it a lay flat, you can call it whatever you like, but it's a brilliant uh, invention from Japan. And it's very easy to deploy. It's hook in at your offtake tap and just roll this fire hydrant type reel out to the end of the row. And that will get a beautiful even coverage uh, over your cover crop. Now we don't use flickers or sprinklers or swivel systems here because we don't like the circular patterns. They're leaving dry triangles uh, along the edge every few meters. So for us, unless you overlap the, the radius of the uh, circular watering system, you might make the triangles disappear, but you're gonna have a double wet overlap uh, where the sprays overlap that way. So we don't like that. It's an uneven and not efficient way of distributing water. This one will get a perfect oblong uh, soaking within about five minutes uh, and is the equivalent of six millimeters of rain every five minutes. So these aren't cheap, they're about four or five hundred dollars now, but in terms of cover crop, we think this is the best way to go, at least to get it started. After that, you can usually rely on the rain to raise up your cover crop. So any questions uh, regarding cover crop, please let me know. Um, there are certain varieties that do well in summer and some in winter. So you need a winter set and a summer set. And that's just a different variety of mixes. Just ask your local uh, agricultural supplier. And uh, some of the cheaper ways to do this is to buy the separate bags and mix the seeds up yourself rather than let them do it. They uh, track a price premium when they put seven seeds into the one bag. And that bag was $90 so for 20 kilos, so it's not cheap. But you can reduce that cost down a little bit by mixing your own. So what are good seeds for winter? Well, oats, as I've mentioned, the vetch has been very good. Rye is very good. And the reasons for, and barley sometimes, but the reasons for that is they're frost tolerant. So we get one or two frosts a year, here a year. So we're not gonna plant things like cowpea or lab lab, because they will perish in the frost. So we wait till after August here in Queensland before we start planting summer cover crop seeds. If you're in doubt, just ask your local agricultural supplier. So with that, uh, please hit like and subscribe. And any questions, leave in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, over and out.